This Singaporean male was an illegal bookie, a gambler, a secret society member, and a street hawker selling satay. Fortunately, he is a fictitious character, but one that its creators think is plausible. If you, you look past the food and the, the person behind the, the store, actually there are many, many interesting stories about our hawker, uh, hawkers, uh, their life stories. What, how, when they became hawkers, uh, what did they go through, you know, what their day-to-day is like. Yeah, so I, I don't think it is very unusual actually. Uh, maybe it's at the upper end of normal, <laughs> like crossing to a bit this unnormal, but I don't think it's uh, out of imagination that this couldn't be one person. I guess it's almost 80, 80 to 90%. 90 percent. Yeah. Right. It's based on real stories. The outside of the hawker life, right. um, like the scene where the, during the funeral where there are gangsters around uh, chanting, I've, I've actually encountered that before. Um, for the collections, I think um, most of us, many of us are aware illegal for the. You probably heard about your aunties or the neighbors. They bought by for these, um, or you may even know people who collect for these illegally. Yeah, so all these are quite real, you know. When the graphic novel Ten Sticks and One Rice begins, readers join the 62-year-old Neil Hock Singh, where he is at his lowest. His satay stall is seeing less customers, his childhood friend has just passed away, and to top it off, he has gotten the news that he has cancer. Co-creators Yong Hui and Hong Ting tell us that Neil Hock Singh is a combination of experiences from when they helped their hawker parents. Myself, my parents, they, they are hawkers. Right. And I believe Yong Hui's brothers, and, uh, uh, they are hawkers as well. Uh, so we are kind of drawing this uh, similar experiences in our life to put into this story. Right. Yeah. My parents were selling Hokkien Mee. Yeah. Where? To be Yunos and in Badoo. And uh, when was this what you was? was when I was in my secondary school days. Yeah. Excellent. Don't we? Satay. Satay? Yeah. Mm. So very much like uh, uh, our protagonist, uh, Hong Singh. Eh? Correct. And I want to say this on camera. Sure. Actually, the, the best combination is Hokkien Mee and satay. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. To contain the smoke around the coffee shop in 1981, Neil Singh drew out plans for a special satay grill. Yong Hui reveals that part of the story happened in real life. And there's a significant reason why we're outside here at uh, Amokyo Block 608. Because if you turn to the first panel of the book, we see actually Amokyo Block 608. And right there is the coffee shop. Block 608 was actually the place where your father actually sold something. Yeah, yeah. This is the actual place. Um, so, so the cover uh, has uh, this... It's, it's actually a real grill for satay, and I think it's probably the one of the kind. It was back in the 1980s, uh, and my father actually sort of thought of this, and he asked a friend to build this for him. The, the good thing about this is that um, you can have about 80 sticks of satay here, which is a lot by today's standard, and this uh, suction will suck out the, the smoke. and. By the side are uh, glasses, so you actually see it's quite transparent. So a lot of people will pass by and be able to see that satay is being grilled there. And that time, they, the the tegu uh, they will allow the satay to be outside the coffee shop. Right. Yeah. So when people pass by, they can see the satay, and so the orders are a lot easier than during those times. Coming up next, the co-creators get into how they turned memories into a piece of art, and what the message of the book really is. 